Welcome to PHRMG Creations. Today I am going to teach you a different topic. The old seven, the first seven, the basic seven, quality professionals have many names for these seven basic tools of quality. This video will help to understand the basics of these quality tools. Please thumbs up, share, comment if you like my video. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button to see more educational videos like this. 7 basic quality tools are simple graphical techniques used to analyze quality related data statistically. Visual interpretation of a large amount of data in a proper way helps both statistical quality and process control. Dr. Keoru Ishikawa was the first quality management expert who used these techniques for problem solving and process improvements. These are used to analyze the production process, control fluctuations product quality, identify the key issues, and give solutions to avoid future defects. Let's see what are these quality tools are. 1. Check Sheets 2. Control Chart 3. Stratification also known as a flow chart or run chart. 4. Perry 2 chart. 5. Histogram. 6. Cause and effect diagram, also known as a fishbone or Ishikawa diagram. 7. Scatter diagram. Let's move to our first quality tool. The check sheet. The check sheet is a document or format used to collect real time data at the data generated location. The collected data can be quantitative or qualitative. Check sheets that represent qualitative information is sometimes called tally sheets. However, check sheets have now become obsolete. Business process management software replaced this quality tool which enables automatically to record more complex data. Now you can see a check sheet that is used to check extruded polythene film thickness. Also, you can see this is a quantitative data check sheet. By answering the five W's it can be prepared simple, informative, and useful check sheets. Who is filling this check sheet? What is collecting? Representation of each check, identification of batch or lot number. Where is the data collecting location? Machine, facility, room, apparatus. When is the collection take place? Shift, hour day of the week. Five uses for check sheets in quality control were identified by Keoru Ishikawa. To check the form of the probability distribution of a process. To quantify defects by type. To quantify defects by location. To quantify defects by cause, example, machine, worker. To keep track of the completion of steps during a multi-step procedure. In other words, as a checklist. Let's move to our second quality tool, control chart. A control chart is a statistical process control tool used to control manufacturing or business process within given control limits. These are also known as Schwarz charts or process behavior charts. The best definition for control charts is the graphical device for statistical process monitoring, simply called SPM. Counting on a number of process characteristics to be monitored, there are two basic sorts of control charts. The first one is a univariate control chart, which may be a graphical display of one quality characteristic. The second mentioned is a multivariate control chart may be a graphical display of a statistic that summarizes or represents quite one quality characteristic. Control chart types X bar and R chart. X bar and S chart. Schwart individuals control chart, M chart or XMR chart. Three way chart. P chart. NP chart. C chart. U chart. E, W, M, A chart. C, U, S, U, M chart. Time series model. Regression control chart. Now you can see fixed limit control chart. It consists center line, upper control limit, and lower control limit. According to the chart, defects are controlled within a given control limits. Third quality tool, stratification. 
alternatively called flowchart or run chart. Stratification is a data separation technique that can be used to analyze patterns by data gathered from a variety of sources. Therefore some lists replace stratification with a flowchart or run chart. A flowchart is a sort of diagram that describes a workflow or process flow. Flowcharts are utilized in analyzing, designing, documenting, or managing a process or program in various fields. There are specific symbols that were defined for each task within the process. Let's learn some major symbols in the flowchart. Start and end of the process also called the terminator. We can use this symbol for the process. For the decision making stage, we can use this symbol. For the document, this is the symbol for the document. Arrow, the arrow is the symbol which connects all these symbols each other. This is an example of a basic flowchart. It represents steps to be followed before repairing the lamp. It is a simple flow diagram, but it clearly describes each step to be followed. Second alternative for stratification is run chart. A run chart is a linear graphical interpretation of data plotted over time. By collecting and plotting data over time, it describes trends or patterns in the process. Due to the unavailability of control limits, run charts cannot represent process stability. However, it shows how the process is running. The run chart can be a valuable tool at the basic stages of a process as it reveals important information about the process before collected enough data to create reliable control limits. Now you can see a basic type of run chart which plotted speed over time. Next quality tool I am going to describe is Perry 2 chart. Perry 2 chart is a graphical indicator of defect frequency as well as their cumulative impact. These charts are used for Perry 2 analysis, which is a statistical problem solving technique in decision making used for the selection of a limited number of tasks that produce a significant overall effect. The Perry 2 principle, also known as the 80 20 rule, means that 20% of causes generate 80% problems. This is a table that is used to plot the Perry 2 chart. In the first column, you can see a different type of defects, and in the second column frequency of defects is shown. Defects are included into table in descending frequency. In the third column, cumulative frequencies are shown. Then the fourth column calculated cumulative percentages. The cumulative percentage is the cumulative value divided by total defects and multiplied by 100. Now you can see the above data plotted in a defect analysis Perry 2 chart. Fifth quality tool is histogram. The histogram is a graphical representation of the numerical data distribution. It was first developed by Carl Pearson. The first step of the construction of a histogram is to bin, or bucket, the range of values, which means, divide the entire range of values into a series of intervals. Then count how many values belong to each interval. Consecutive, non-overlapping intervals of a variable are usually specified for histogram bins and bin intervals must be adjacent. In most cases, but not essential, bins may equal in size. According to the shape of the distribution of data there are different types of histograms that can be seen. This is a symmetric, unimodal histogram. This histogram is skewed right, and this one is skewed left. This histogram has a bimodal distribution and last histogram, which is a multimodal histogram. Next tool is cause and effect diagram. A cause and effect diagram is also known as a fishbone diagram or an Ishikawa diagram, which was introduced by Dr. Keoru Ishikawa. It is a graphical tool for displaying a list of causes associated with a specific effect. The cause and effect diagram most of the time consists of six branches. These branches are designed according to six M's. Man, machine, material, method, measurement and Mother Nature are included into fish skeleton, so brainstorming points can simply insert into these branches. 
then it gives a clear picture to identify possible and probable causes. This is an example of a fishbone diagram. You can categorize brainstorm possible causes into these six M's. Let's move to our final quality tool, scatter diagram. A scatter diagram is also known as a correlation chart, scatter plot, and scatter graph. A scatter diagram or graph is two variable graphs and the first variable is independent and the second variable depends on the first. It can classify scatter diagrams in many ways. According to the correlation, can divide scatter diagrams into the following categories. Scatter diagram with no correlation. Scatter diagram with moderate correlation. Scatter diagram with strong correlation. This is a scatter diagram with a strong positive correlation. This scatter diagram represents a strong negative correlation. I think this video will help you to understand the basics of seven quality tools. Please comment below for any questions, suggestions, and also share your knowledge. Thanks. Hope to see you again with a new video.